Hunter x Hunter episode 131. Anger x and x light. Tachiba gyakuten desu ne. Pito wa watashi tachi ga komugi o dakkai shita to omotte imasu. It's funny for all my joking about the real Nen is XYZ mundane life thing. It turns out that actually is Poof's thing. His magic is just being a jerk. It does look like Gon will be killed, yeah. It's hard for me to imagine what's saving him right now. Wow, that reversed completely. Table's turned, like he said. Gon is now the point of leverage. That's a choice. It's good that we have this. You need to get there really quickly, like... Yesterday. Finally, something we can do to help Gon. Of all the wanting to be helpful and useful, this feels qualitatively different. It doesn't feel at all like it's just for Clue's self-gratification, other than the, you know, the normal, healthy extent of feeling good helping a friend. Also, no hesitation, no fear of his own death, nothing. How long does it take Peter to heal her arm? In the past, Gon has been really good about snapping himself out of these moments, but what... What would he lean on in this case? What does he have to look to? Everything's just broken. Just the the brutality of Pito healing herself while a broken gun cries in the background. And here up to this point, I, <laughs> I thought she was so so caring and kind. You should not have let that happen, but okay. Uh oh, <laughs> that was intimidating. Get out of there. Like, I, I gotta kill you. And I'm not really that sorry. No hard feelings? Well, this is something to focus on for Gon, at least. Oh, my poor, poor Gon. My poor sweet boy. No, she's not. Not. No one is. This is so different. It's so different. Going to such a child here. It's so tragically relatable, the fact that he can't process that Kite's not coming back. That just irrational hope. In that confusion, you you still kind of know. It's just a weird emotional lifeline you're trying to save yourself that doesn't help. It's like that feeling of having a really beautiful dream and waking up and being crushed, but like happening over the course of a second over and over again. When I've been in this state, it feels like my brain is just ping-ponging between fantasy and reality. He can't even think about his own danger either. Yeah, I mean, this rage actually could be really... This is what you need rage for. I wonder how much of a level up he gets when this anger comes out. Cool if I come into just Pito's limbs scattered around the room. This is not being <laughs> conceived and drawn in the most heroic framing. Makes sense. It's pure darkness. Oh, Kalua being on the way feels totally different to me suddenly. It's not to save Gon from Peter or his life. What is that? What? Is, what the hell? Just become full demon. What? That much? That's really scary in the hands of Gon. This is so cool. It's it looks so amazing. Ah, uh, the music too. But, I mean, we already know the outcome, if what you've said is true. Or this could end with Gon petting her head, detached from her body. It's funny, like a few minutes ago, I'm thinking, yeah, Kluwe, you need to get over there and save Gon. Now I'm thinking, Kluwe, you need to get over here and save Gon. But 
in a totally different way. Gon can do this. Our Gon, this character, the the one has not been always the most level-headed and reasonable or adult. This again is Netero's don't underestimate the power of humanity, the extent of malice. That was such a 180. Like I went from feeling fear for Gon to feeling fear for Pito and fear for Kalua showing up to this maybe. This is going to feel really good too for Gon. That's the thing. This kind of letting go and breaking, I don't care about anything. It's so great. It's such a drug, especially right on the heels of and basically being a reaction to total powerlessness. I was saying, if you're going, what do you what do you draw on? What do you go to? It really is just the rage. Giving up the rage, let's say ending this with Pito or whatever, means going back to grieving, despair, and helplessness, which going doesn't want, obviously. Given the choice, who's gonna choose like shriveling, crying child over demon lord? <laughs> Uh, I'm no longer even physical matter. I am just darkness incarnate. Well, the manga manga may not be finished, but we we got adult Ugin style Gon. He actually he looks amazing. It's got childhood voice though. You don't? Is it out of respect for or still some hope or kite? Yes, master. I'm the Ant King now. <laughs> I mean, may as well. Who knows? This episode already is something else. Even just halfway through. Abuse it. Thought put into it. He really does look Ugin like I'll say. You really goofed when you healed your own arm. That was not the right timing. You did not read that room correctly. Weirdly, Pito's humanity cost her this whole thing. Because what she should have done if she was just being purely animalistic and strategic. Well, maybe that's a contradiction. But if she had no honor at all, no respect for Gon at all, is only concerned with killing him or the king. She says, yes, Gon, I'm about to heal Kite. And then she comes up behind him and just cuts off his head. And that's the end of it. But like, I guess that has some obligation to him, some respect, you know, a lack of hatred for him, given all that she's progressed in the last three hours. She's like, I have an obligation to let you know that I'm going to kill you and I will not be helping Kite. And then here we are being led as a hostage through the forest to kill the king. Fish and mailed. And he's so intimidating. She's not even, or is she trying? She is trying. But she knows. The whiplash I'm getting from my conceptions being just swung wildly all over the place. Do you think I'm actually feeling fear and sort of pity for Pito attacking Gon? There's no way. I mean, she knows that. She must know this is... Pointless. I like how his hair just flows with his aura. Yeah, I mean, he's just not bothered. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh my god, he's still doing <laughs> rock, scissors, paper. <laughs> oh, it's horrific. As this grown ass adult. Oh, this is it. This is it. And the horror movie soundtrack, too. She can't even move. She just probably snaps her spine. Oh, the setup for this is so brutal. It's so brutal. The sound effects, too. Not so strong. Yeah, are you? <laughs> Sorry. In actuality, I feel kind of sad. Is that spiteful, huh? I might be prepared never to live again. Oh, is that the condition? Wow. It's very attack on Titan. He basically is a Titan at this point. Uh, okay. So I'm afraid of the next sentence. Oh, it's not just one hit. Oh. Maybe Kalu instinctively knows. Uh, you can... She's already gone. Oh my god. It makes it so, so much extra horrific that he's doing the Rockstar paper thing every time. It's just an execution. 
I wonder what Kite would say about all this now. I wonder what Jing would say about all this. I don't know. <laughs> the physical body thing has a surprisingly powerful effect on my feelings watching the two characters. Like, it's the same Gon, same character. Kalua feels very small <laughs> standing here looking at Gon. Kalua doesn't really feel equipped. The saving grace is that it's still Gon. In fact, maybe the only light out is their friendship or like there has to be something for Gon to pivot to. He's not going to go back to that state of despair and grief. It's like the antithesis of Gon's character and, and everything he's wanted. It's too painful. He can't cope with it. He'll stay in demon mode until there's something else that's better. A lot of times that's basically what it comes down to. I just in so many things going aside, you know, you, you think about stopping something or not doing something. I shouldn't be like this. There's something about the resistance to that that almost guarantees it. It ties you to the thing. What seems to be more effective is replacement. So it's not I'm not going to do this anymore or be this way anymore. It's I'm going to do this thing now. And it helps if that thing is good and rewarding. Like with addiction, you don't just stop doing something. You you start doing other things that hopefully take the place of addiction that ideally are positive things. But I mean, even the issue with that for Gon and Klua is that Gon, I think at least, never really had a, a deep, pure, true friendship love. That definitely was in there somewhere, but that wasn't a whole thing. Kalua was sort of an instrument of how great Gon is. It's hard to put into words. It feels a little bit calculating. It feels hierarchical. And so with Gon having sort of put Kalua in a lower position and thinking the way he does with the values that he has, Kalua's words and Kalua's friendship is like something I already have anyway. It's not really something great. It's like when you're really struggling in life and you're obsessing over things like romantic interests and your position in society or whatever. And then a family member who you know loves you unconditionally is like, well, I love you. And you're like, that does nothing for me in this problem, which is awful because it's way more important. It's a somewhat out of touch way of evaluating things. It's just wanting things you don't have yet. Basically a surefire sign that things are not totally pure. It's what you can get. I'm not not really sure what leverage Kalua has here. Oh yeah, he is kind of Bisky-like. But all, yeah, also not really like Bisky at all. And she wasn't the demon lord, or was she? Well, he lost his innocence and became an adult. There's some some important part of his childhood state that's gone forever. There's a substantial amount of hope that's been lost. <laughs> oh, what if she has some kind of re-raise spell? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Who got hit? Okay, go go and lost an arm. Kalua managed to save him? Peter lost her head just like she took kites. That came full circle. It's not reassuring. I don't think so. I don't think so. By being like her, do you mean armless? Because in that sense... What does he do? Hit, <laughs> hit her with his own arm? Wow. Was that technically a punch? The armless rocks is her paper. It's very Endeavor. He'll be destroyed. Uh, maybe wait for Kalua to leave? Can anything get through? We will not find out if it works right now. <laughs> oh, we will find out if it works right now. It, it didn't work. Gon just went ahead with that. Oh my god. Total just self-destructiveness. This whole don't worry, I'm happy, I feel good here feels familiar. It's like seeing people, whether it's fully conscious or not, in some way, at least, 
deliberately sabotaging their own lives, almost like it's a self-punishment. Like how far can I go down before I hit something real? What's the floor of this? If I lash out far enough, if I go down deep enough, will somebody come stop me and notice me, save me? I think we found out how much restraint Gon is willing to show for Kalua. I had some hope at least that their friendship, their history could reach Gon in some level, but it was a slim hope to begin with that just became a lot slimmer. It just feels too stacked against that happening. Like the severity of Gon's breakdown, how much of a pendulum swing that was from what he was before to what he is now. All the anticipation of Kite, all his emotional eggs in that basket that was not possible to begin with, only to have them basically stomped on by Pito and looking around for what else there is, but that was Gon's whole thing in so many ways. I mean, not only was that his whole plan, but it was his whole psyche. I'm someone who can do what I want, get what I want, and things work out for me because that's what it means to be a person of value. That's what it means to have my father love me, whatever. This whole complicated web of self-perception that this incident was just like the perfect destroyer of. Then looking around for something else that can help, there isn't any because Gon's mental system is specifically designed this way and everything of value that he built in this system is gone. It would take a total rewiring. Meanwhile, I have the power of the devil himself. I can just smash my enemies. At least I'm not powerless. I think the most horrific part was the repeated bashing in of Pito's head against the tree, made even worse by the fact that it's this game of rock, scissors, paper, this childhood thing. Like his body grew up, but not a lot else did. I mean, he was exposed to a very adult reality, but he doesn't have the adult tools. It's just pain. Gon is lost and it feels like there's no one they can rein, rein him in. Maybe collectively, but I don't think so. I think it would take like Jing showing up. That's all I can think of. Or Kite coming back to life. He needs someone that he likes and holds in higher esteem than himself, which is not many people. It's cool in a twisted way that even though Gon doesn't know this, the removing of Pito's head is direct metaphorical retribution for, for Kite. But like, you can compare Pito stroking Kite's head to Gon repeatedly bashing in hers. I think a common story for adolescents that you see reflected in media is like, there's something you really believe in and then that thing fails. And your next iteration of personality is somewhat in opposition to that thing. And there's a level to which that's sort of healthy because you're starting to question. You're starting for the first time to take on your own independence of thought and action. You're not living in a place of total blind faith. You're thinking for yourself, even if your thinking is basic and not nuanced, whatever, it's a, it's the start. You see this very commonly in kids who are like, you know what the problem is? It's society, you know? It's like very, very black and white thinking, but whatever, you know, it's, it's a step. It's just the next logical conclusion of society is perfect and everything is taken care of and I just need to do what my parents tell me, you know? But also it can go really wrong depending on the severity of, of it. Like what has failed going in this situation? It's not like the education system. It's not a parent. It's the world. It's life itself. So like what does any of it matter? What is the point of any sort of meeting halfway or dealing with life or responsibility or morality if just life itself is terrible and unfair? All you have is you and your power and thankfully you're blessed with massive amounts of godlike power suddenly. The saving grace of a lot of this is that teenagers are often limited in their effectiveness in life. Gon has no such limitations or restraints. It does feel somewhat Attack on Titan. I mean, like, the forest scene had to be influenced, right? But also in the sense that what stops Gon now? What stops him from just annihilating everything he doesn't like? Is this not the human form of what happened with Netero? And his warning, you know, don't underestimate humans' power, which, you know, could be heavily implied to be malice. To that point, I think one thing that often makes this kind of darkness more chilling is how calm and calculating it is. Like, everyone understands moments of being really heated and losing yourself in anger for a few minutes. It's a different thing when you're calm and thinking and able to talk, but you're like, I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to hurt this person or this thing. That's scary. Like, with your calm, conscious mind, you're, you're living in that state of rage, as opposed to just being possessed by it for a moment, you are willingly and consciously being an arm of that feeling and that destructive force. So all of Gon's don't worry about me, I'm in a good place, I'm okay, this is just what's right, this is retribution. It just feels worse, it's more concerning. Like I've said, I think this can be a positive thing, like this is the start of death and rebirth, right? Like you have to give up something, some, some part of yourself has to die. Something that was wrong, even if it feels positive and even if it is something really beautiful, like just blind faith and hope and whatever, if it's not not real, it's holding you back, and you have to do what feels like moving backwards and giving up something that gives you comfort to go back to baseline to build something more real that can also be beautiful in time, you know, given acceptance and understanding of that thing. But this was like too big of a death, too quickly for Gon, and like there's nothing being built that's really that great. It's building back worse. Like I said, there's no replacement. I, I can't see it. It's just a void. It's just pain and sadness and no one to turn to. Gon, now that I think about it, in a way that's hard to explain, very isolated from the beginning, despite having friends and always being with people and being interested in people. There's something very lonely about his outlook. And now I guess Gon goes on to fight the king who actually has something to hold on to in opposition to Gon, who's just everything can burn, which is very interesting. Total role reversal.